Hello guys and welcome back to another Blender tutorial. Today I'm going to show you step by step how to make a dandelion in Blender. So this is the result here. You can see nice and detailed. We're going to make all of these little bits here of particle systems. And this is not meant to be hyper realistic. Obviously if you wanted this to look really realistic, you're going to have to spend a lot more time with the texturing and materials especially. But this is just kind of a fun modeling exercise and I will be uploading my final result to my Patreon as well. So if you want to make some dandelions in Blender, Keep watching and let's make it. So we're gonna start by selecting all the default objects. We're gonna press delete. And then we're gonna go shift A. Let's go to our mesh options, add in a cylinder or a circle. And uh, we're gonna go add to the add circle settings here. Let's give that 16 vertices. And we're just gonna tab into edit mode. And what we're gonna do with all of this active, you can press F3 on your keyboard. And you can type in checker and do a checker deselect. And then you can go S to scale it in like so. And then what we're going to do, we're going to press A to select everything, and we're just going to go S to scale it down. And we're going to go E to extrude and Z, and extrude up into Z, and then S to scale. And then E to extrude and Z, and go up, and then S to scale. And then we're going to go um, Shift, Alt, S, and just round it out a little bit. And we're going to just grab these guys at the bottom again, go E to extrude and Z to go down, S to scale. And then Shift, Alt, S, and just round those out a bit. And then we can go E to extrude down one more time, S to scale. We're just going to go like that. And let's grab this guy here. And what we're going to do is we're just going to go E to extrude, S to scale, and extrude it in, like so. And then E to extrude to go up, S to scale, E to extrude. And let's go up to here, scale it a little bit. And let's go to our modifiers. Let's give this a subdivision surface modifier. And let's go E to extrude and take it up a little bit and S to scale, like so. We're gonna tab back out, we're gonna right click and go shade smooth. So now we have the seed pod here, but we're gonna make some more components. Let's go back to edit mode and with these averts here selected, we're gonna go shift D to duplicate, S to scale. Let's bring it down a little bit. And then we're gonna go E to extrude. We're just gonna extrude this up like so. And we're gonna go about this much. And then we're gonna go E to extrude and then S to scale, E to extrude, S to scale, and then E to extrude out, S to scale. And we're just kind of making like this kind of round knob at the top, like so. And then we're gonna press F just to fill that in. And now we have kind of like this round bit at the top and we can use that as a place to kind of make the little hairs come out of. So let's just maybe scale it just a little bit. You guys kind of get the idea. So that's where we're gonna be kind of spawning our little hairs from. So before we go any further, let's go to our materials. Let's go new. So we've given the material, let's call it seed pod. And let's just go and give it a viewport display color like this. And let's go new, let's go create another material. Let's just call it um, seed stem. Because later we're gonna duplicate this and we don't wanna um, add materials to everything. So just by adding the materials now, before duplication, we can do that. So inside of edit mode, we're gonna um, assign that seed stem. And let's go back into object mode. Let's give that material a viewport display. And now we have this, we have our seed. Now we're gonna make the little hairs coming out of it. So we're gonna to go to our object data properties. We're gonna go create a new vertex group. Then we're gonna tab into edit mode. And we're just gonna select all of these verts at the tip here. And we're gonna go and assign those to that group. We're gonna tab back out. And now we're gonna to go to our um, particle properties. We're gonna go create a new particle system. We're gonna make it hair. We wanna to go to our um, vertex groups down here and let's go to our density and select that group, okay? Now over here I can see I've probably selected too many um, verts. So I'm just gonna select these bottom verts here and just remove them from that group. We only want these top ones here to be assigned. Okay, there we go, that's better. And if you're still kind of having that issue, what you can do is you can tab back in and just remove some more of these verts by removing them. So it's a little bit more like this. Again, that's looking better. Now we may have some normal issues here. So I'm just gonna go inside of edit mode and just check under the displays to see if the normal's okay. And I'm gonna press A to select everything. I'm gonna go Alt N and I'm gonna go recalculate outside. And now you can see the normals are correct. So if we now go back into object mode, the hairs are pointing out the right way. Now they have the wrong color here. So let's go to our materials tab. Let's create a new color or a new material. And let's just call it fluff. You can call it whatever you want. And let's just go to the viewport display. We'll leave it as white for now. And now let's go to our material properties or our um, particle properties. Let's go to the render and under the material, let's choose that fluff. So now it'll be using that. 
So a few more things we can do. We can come to the number here and make it 80. And then we can go down at the children and make it interpolated. And for the display amount, I'm gonna go with 20. And for the render amount, I'm just gonna go with 30, like so. And what we can do, we can go into our particle edit. We can press F to grow our brush and we can just kind of paint up like this, just to kind of create a more natural looking thing like this from the side. Um, this is optional, but I think it just looks a lot more realistic. So now we have that done. Uh, you can see it's looking a bit rough. We can go to our viewport display and up the strand steps. And also under your render, you can go enable B spline and that's gonna smooth things out as well. So now we have our seed here. And the cool thing is at any point you can come to edit mode and you can adjust the stem here like that, which is pretty cool. So now we've made, I think probably one of the more harder parts It's just making a seed for our dandelion. We're now gonna go shift A, we're gonna add in a UV sphere. We're gonna tab into edit mode. We're gonna go S, Z and kind of flatten the sphere like this. And then we're gonna to go to our edge select option, make sure everything's active. And you're gonna press F3 on the keyboard. You're gonna type in poke and you're gonna click on poke faces. Now we have all of this triangulated mesh here. What we're gonna do, we're just gonna come in here in the middle and just select one of these X's that runs like this. Okay, so not the straight edges, but just these X's. And then we're gonna to go to our select. We're gonna to go to select similar. And we're gonna to go to face angle. It should, select, it should select all the other faces that look like that. Then you can go control I or command I to inverse the selection. And then you can go X and you can dissolve the edges. And now we have them going in this sort of pattern. Um, we can also go ahead to our overlays, just turn off the normals for now. And this is a little bit too much topology. So I'm gonna press A to select everything. I'm gonna press F3 and type in unsub. And I'm gonna go to unsubdivide, like so. And now what we can do is we can go to our face select option, make sure all the faces are active. We're gonna press F3 and we're now gonna go extrude and type in individual. We're gonna go extrude individual faces, right click to let go. And let's go to our pivot transform and make it individual origins and go S to scale that in a bit. And then E to extrude and extrude them all in just a bit and then tab back out. And now you can give this a subdivision surface modifier. And now we have this bit. Let's right click and go shade smooth. And to make it look a little bit more natural, we can go back into edit mode and enable proportional editing. And let's select the vertex at the bottom here and go G, Z and move it up. You can roll the middle mouse button to influence the fall off. And we're just gonna make it a little bit flatter in the bottom like that, just to have that sort of more organic looking shape. So now we can grab our seed pod and we can go S to scale that down, G to move it over and R to rotate. And now we're just gonna place this guy into one of these um, cavities here like so. There we go. And now you can go Shift D to duplicate that and rotate and place it in some of these other cavities. And you can do this as many times as you want. So Shift D to duplicate, rotate, and just go around. You can fill one in on any point, but I, I like the idea of just having a few of them so it looks like the others have already blown off. But you can do this as random as you want. Just duplicate and move around. Shift D to duplicate, double tap R, and just kind of place them around. So maybe in a front view, we'll grab one here, Shift D. Let's rotate that one, move it over here. Shift D, let's move one in here. But I think you guys kind of get the idea, right? So you can now go ahead, duplicate this as many times as you want, add in some seed pods. But this is what we have for now. So now we're gonna make the kind of leaves over here. So that's gonna be quite simple. We're gonna go Shift A, we're gonna add in a circle. We're gonna to go to our add circle settings and let's make that 12. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna press A or make sure to select that circle. Let's move it down a little bit. We're gonna go into edit mode and let's just press A to select everything, E to extrude, S to scale it out a little bit and then G to move it down like this. And I'm gonna just turn off proportional editing. And then we are going to go select every second face by holding in shift. So every second face we're gonna, um, or edge, we're gonna select, not face. Going all the way around, because there's 12 of them, so it should have six selected. Then we're gonna go E to extrude and extrude it down a little bit. And then we're gonna hold in shift and just select every other one like this, going all the way around. And then E to extrude, and let's take it down a little bit further. And now what we can do 
is we can actually grab all of these and then go E to extrude and Z and extrude them down like so. And then go Shift R just to repeat that action. And we're gonna go down to about here. And then you can go over here to your transforms. Let's change it to individual. Let's enable proportional editing and let's go S to scale and then roll the middle mouse button. And if you actually come here, you can turn off on connected only and then go S to scale. And now you can see we're kind of doing this to all of them at the same time. You can increase the fall off all the way to the top. And now we have this. You can also now turn it back to median point. You can select some verts in the middle and go S to scale, like so. Just give a bit more organic shape. And then just go G, Z and move everything up till it's kind of touching over here like this. Um, you can spend as much time as you want on adding this extra detail. You can make it look a little bit more random by lifting it more in some places and less in others. But one more thing we're gonna do is we're gonna give this a subdivision surface modifier. And then we're gonna give it a displace modifier. And we're gonna go new. Let's go to our um, texture properties and let's come to the type and change it to clouds. And now let's go back to our modifier. So let's just bring down that strength. And now let's give it a solidify. Give it a little bit of thickness, like so. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna give it another subdivision surface modifier. I'm gonna right click and go shade smooth. And now we have some of our dandelion leaves hanging like this. Now we can go shift A and add in a circle. Let's just scale that, tab into edit mode and go E to extrude and extrude it down. Scale it a bit and then E to extrude like so. Scale it a bit, E to extrude down and tab back out. Let's right click and go shade smooth and we can also give that a subdivision surface modifier. And now we have our dandelion. So I'm gonna quickly go ahead and I'll just skip this bit on the video because it's a bit boring, but I'm just gonna go ahead and duplicate this a few more times. Okay, so I've gone ahead and duplicated that a few more times, just added a few more of these seeds. And now what we're gonna do, we're gonna go into our front view, we're gonna go Shift A, we're gonna add in a camera. And we're gonna go G, Y, and move back our camera. And we're just gonna zoom like this and move up a little bit, get a nice shot. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go Shift A, I'm gonna add in an empty. Then I'm gonna select all of the things related to the dandelion and holding in Shift, I'm gonna select that empty and go Control P. I'm gonna go object, keep transform. So now they're all parented to that empty. So in my camera view, I can now go R to rotate, G to move, and I can move this guy over here like so. Just kind of get a bit of a cooler looking, more dynamic pose. Then I'm gonna go control B and just drag over my camera. That'll limit the rendering to the camera. We can go to our render settings and change the render engine to cycles. Let's make our device GPU, only if you have one. And then under the max render samples, let's make it 70. And let's go Control S and just just save. I'm just gonna save this to my desktop. And now that it's saved, let's go Z and let's go rendered. Now we're gonna go Shift A. Let's add in a area light and move it over to the side. R to rotate. And let's go to our strength or our light settings. Let's make it um, 700 on the power and increase the size. And then let's go Shift D to duplicate this and duplicate it again, and then Shift D, let's duplicate one over here. Just for some nice lighting from all around. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna go to our world properties. Let's go give it a um, sky texture. And let's go over to our render properties and let's go down to the film and make it transparent. So now we have some nice lighting. You can always come to your world properties and bring down the strength, something like 0 0.3. But the idea here is just to have some nice lighting. And now what we can do is we can go over to our shading workspace. We can go into camera view, go Z, go rendered. Now let's grab one of these seed pods and let's go to our materials we added earlier. And we're gonna start with the seed pods and we're gonna give that a darker kind of brown material. We're gonna bring down the, or up the roughness a little bit. Then we're gonna go shift A, search and get a noise texture. I'm gonna plug the color into the normal here. Then go Shift A search and get a color ramp. Place it on this cable. Shift A search and get a bump node. And then place it over here between the color ramp and the normal input. And then bring the strength way down. Now what we can do is change the scale here to 12. 
And now we have a little bit of bump and roughness here. Make sure that this color ramp is actually going into the height of the bump. And now we have some, um, some nice bump and texture here. We could actually take the strength up just a little bit. And that just makes it look a lot better with the seed pods here. Now we're just gonna select this whole node setup and we're gonna go Control C to copy it. Then we're gonna to go to the seed stem. We're gonna delete these two nodes. We're gonna right click and go paste. And then we're gonna come here to the base color and change it to like a kind of yellowish kind of green to make the stem. And the white will leave as it is. Now we can grab this bit over here, which everything is attached to. Let's go new and let's just call it bud. And let's delete these two nodes. Let's right click and go paste. And let's give this a kind of um, greenish, kind of yellowish color for our dandelion. And that's looking pretty good. And now we can select the leaves and go new. Let's call it leaves. Let's delete these two nodes and let's right click and go paste. And let's give them kind of a yellowish, kind of greenish color and make it look a little bit more dead because these are older. And we can also just increase the scale of our roughness. Maybe bring down that strength a little bit. And here we have our dandelion. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna make sure to save. I'm gonna go render and just render this image to see what it looks like. And here we have it. Now keep in mind that the modeling here is the main thing we're focusing on. I just kind of quickly covered these materials. So at this point, you could definitely add some more realistic shaders or plant shaders. And there's a lot of tutorials on how to make different kind of shaders on YouTube. And then you can do some nice um, backgrounds that you could add in. And you can do a lot of things to really make this look like a cool rendered shot. So this is my original. And it's the exact same thing that I showed you guys how to do. And with this one, I spent a little bit more time on the lighting. And I did something a little bit different with my materials. I added some depth of field to make a nice soft focus. But you guys can do this however you want. I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial on making a dandelion in Blender. And I will be uploading this model to my Patreon. I'll see you guys next time and thank you for watching.